Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Malley here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 27th, 2022, around 12 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for multiple tropical cyclones to be forming in the tropical Atlantic over the next several days. We got a storm alert out there, so let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this morning, we noticed that a couple of things are happening today. It's starting to become more active across the basin today. First of all, starting from left to right, a pretty convectively anemic tropical wave south of the Hispaniola Dominican Republic area right now. Again, this is a tropical wave that we've been monitoring for the past several days, and development of this system has not occurred as fast as what the GFS was advertising earlier in the week. Nonetheless, this will be moving to the northwestern Caribbean. Then we also got a system back here that we'll have to monitor and a new system coming down at a pretty good latitude. So we'll have to watch this. We'll look at the NHC forecast again for this afternoon. We noticed that two systems on the radar right now. Again, the system right now near Dominican Republic and Hispaniola. This will be entering the northwestern Caribbean where some development is possible thereafter. And then a tropical wave or a really convoluted line of tropical waves and uh, located within the monsoon trough, this big broad area of disturbed weather will be moving northwest over the next several days across the central tropical main development region and development of this system is becoming increasingly likely over the next couple of days and we'll talk about that here in a second. So if we look at this tropical wave right now in the Caribbean, we notice that it is pretty broad, disorganized. There isn't really much in the way of shower and thunderstorm activity, but we do notice that there is at least a little bit of moisture out here in the northwestern part of the Caribbean, and this will definitely help to seed this tropical wave as it begins to move towards the northwest and into this more favorable environment. You can still see that there actually is some broad rotation with that today in the overall cloud field. There is a broad circulation, uh, so there definitely is a seedling out there to kind of maybe sprout if it does go into that more favorable environment. Now we'll have to watch this because the models here, especially the GFS, continue to show robust development of this system once it gets into the Northwest Caribbean or potentially the Gulf of Mexico. Now, focusing on the Central Atlantic system, we continue to monitor a convoluted mess here. It's just really a big, broad area of shower and thunderstorm activity and overall spin. We've had this monsoon trough set up over the past couple of days, and this is actually that system located in the monsoon trough down here. And then we've got this other tropical wave that has moved off the coast of Africa during the past several days and is now beginning to interact with this other system down here. Now, this is going to take some time to develop as, again, these two systems are going to interact and it's going to be a bunch of different things that are going to occur. Now, one way of looking at this is the GFS forecast. This is the 850 millibar vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground. This is the 60 run here. We noticed that on the GFS forecast here again, we noticed that development of the system isn't particularly fast. And this is again expected because of that big overall mess that we're seeing out there right now. Now we also noticed that in the GFS forecast, at least here on the 60 run, we also have a storm forming down here potentially in the Caribbean. Now, if we look at the overall wind pattern here, this is the upper level environment as predicted by the GFS here. We'll move this out to about day five. We noticed that in the Caribbean, especially in the northwestern part of the Caribbean, the atmosphere is not all that unfavorable. There actually is a developing upper level anticyclone located just to the northwest of Central America. And this upper level anticyclone actually expands a little bit with time. Now, overall, the upper level environment doesn't look all that conducive. This is by hour 168. And there's just not really much in the way of an upper level environment supportive for any intense hurricanes. But that isn't to say that if we do have a major system in here, that it couldn't create its own outflow. Certainly, the water temperatures are plenty warm. And if we actually look at the precipital, precipital water here anomalies, we notice that there is an overall abundance of moisture that gets carried into the Gulf of Mexico here. And so this does really show me that there is piling air, converging air at the surface, divergence aloft, at least to some degree. And so the GFS forecast suggesting a storm forming in that region isn't totally bogus, but it could be suffering from convective feedback problems. 
Now focusing on the central main development region system, again, if we actually look at the upper level environment here, the upper level environment for this uh, system coming out of the central Atlantic isn't particularly unfavorable and is actually getting more favorable as it heads west. We notice that uh, during this time here, we have kind of this broad upper level anticyclone located uh, in close proximity to where our storm is. And uh, that does change a little bit as we head into potentially the 5th of September here, the long range GFS. But bottom line is the environment seems to be coming more conducive for tropical cyclone formation closer to the Lesser Antilles. If you look at the European forecast, for example, the zero Z run here of the European shows much of the similar solution here. This is by about day five here, hour 120. This is still a very broad disorganized system because of the overall interaction. And this could take several days to eventually clear, but eventually we do get a storm to develop here and, and it goes on to impact other areas. Now, again, looking beyond the five day realm in terms of track and intensity is not really a responsible thing to do especially because we don't have a storm that's formed, but there's a lot of things that will change in this five-day time period. But the bottom line here, according to the European ensembles and the GFS ensembles, is that there certainly could be a storm somewhere nor uh, somewhere uh, close in or immediately north of the Windward Islands, potentially by Friday of next week. So we could be talking about some type of tropical disturbance, some tropi some type of tropical entity north of the Windward Islands somewhere by Friday of next week. So again, this is not necessarily to say that we will have anything or won't have anything, but there's certainly the potential for that. And then looking further out in time here, we notice that there's just not really much being indicated here by the European for this Caribbean system. And in fact, there's actually more tropical waves that emerge off the coast of Africa and try to go on to develop based on the European ensembles here. And real quickly, we'll take a look at the 060 ensembles as well. And out to hour 144, we kind of notice much of the similar solution here. Again, this is by Friday, shows a potential storm impacting portions or could be impacting portions of the northern windward islands at that point. The upper level environment is more than conducive for tropical cyclone formation at this point. Uh, there is this upper level low here, but if the storm is strong enough, it definitely can erode that. So we'll be watching that. Not really seeing any favorable signs over here in the Caribbean. So again, the GFS and its ensembles are the only ones significantly developing that Caribbean system. But I think the main importance is going to be the system out here in the central Atlantic. Again, potentially impacting portions of the northern windward islands sometime uh, by Friday of next week. But impacts and timing remain a very different story and it is going to take several days before we have any exact idea there. Now in terms of the season so far up to this point, the season has been very slow. Only a staggering 2.8 ACE units for this season so far. That is certainly uh, almost unheard of and we notice that we are actually falling very close to this minimum of only 17.4 ACE units. Now, this has been attributed to the longest stretch, basically, of not seeing any tropical cyclone formation. We haven't had activity, really, uh, since the month of July and even before then. Uh, so it's been a long time since we've had any type of development out here, but I do suspect that development is starting to uh, kind of peak its head in the models. We'll have to see, though. There is still some uncertainties regarding that. So we'll just have to see how that all plays out. But again, the bottom line is if you live in the Northern Windward Islands, just understand that there is at least some potential for a tropical disturbance, whether that be a depression storm, hurricane, or, you know, whether that just be a little rainmaker approaching the Northern Windward Islands sometime late next week. But we have a long time to watch that. All right. So that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Romali, and I'll be talking to you guys again some more tomorrow.